Thank you. 
Um, yeah, I mean, something that was kind of striking me, like in, in playing these instruments, that, that that like they share 
kind of a common surface. Mm. And, and I guess, you know, like these combinations of white and black keys or mm. yellow and black keys <laughs> in the case of some of these. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, how do you how do you approach, I guess, your um, like the language that you have across? Mm. I mean, in this case, you're playing this one instrument, like a prepared, you know, pianet mm. or whatever. Mm. Mm. Um, but you, you play many of these. Like, how, mm. how do you relate to that surface? Yeah, well, um, I think a lot of A lot of uh, the surface is, in, you know, just in, internalized. So um, having played keyboard inf instruments for years, you know, like, for example, on um, a piano, a particular shape is going to get a particular sound and all that kind of thing. But then when you've prepared something, the pitches aren't the same. Um, and you can't often predict what the pitches are going to be. Um, and sometimes they're in between, um, you know, uh, the notes of a chromatic scale. So, um, but the shapes are still under your fingers. Um, and I think there's a kind of uh, transference or um, a kind of um, translation of one thing into another. Because on the piano, doing a particular thing might get a very dissonant shape, a uh, very dissonant sound. But on here, because of the way um, it's been prepared, it might not. But I'm still going to be using that shape um in my playing because it's it's yeah you know um and you have to get used to how the pr preparations sound very quickly in order to um deal with that i think so uh but because your um memory and what's gone in and is under your fingers is is so broad that you can do it very quickly. So you, you do realize that a particular thing is getting a different type of sound on this. Um, you realize that very quickly and you adjust, I'd, I'd say. And, and how much of that is it? Is obviously like with, with piano or like pianoistic repertoire, there's a lot of like role in terms of like the hands and specifically mm. register, like fingers of the hand mm. occupy certain kinds of behaviors. Or when you're gonna mm. uh, prepare stuff like this, you might find, or at least I, I find when, when it's prepared mm. stuff, that mm. the role that I might, let's say, like if I was playing piano, like what my pinky might do in like a kind of mm. stride context yeah. is now here right. in this specific preparation. Like yeah. how do you, do you yeah. just kind of like re calibrate, re recalibrate or do you try mm. to like shift your, like how do you? Yeah, I, I think you recalibrate because um, in, as long as your pianistic experience is broad enough, you will have done stuff where that role is up there anyway in okay, some yeah. other context. So I think the more you play the different instruments, the more mm -hmm. um, varied uh, the language you have in your fingers is, and so the more you can um, adapt quickly and, yeah, I'd say. Um, I mean, so you, you haven't played that piano before no. and it's a tricky instrument in some ways um, to make sound good and what I really enjoyed was hearing you find out the possibilities of it um, and um, realize what you could do and kind of in real time <laughs> um, you know uh, get, get you know get an idea out of it yeah mm. yeah and that's something that I, I guess I kind of wanted to can ask about too is like the idea of um, exploration mm. slash exposition, mm. but in the context of specifically performance or improvisation. Mm. So like here, you as far as I know, this is a preparation that you've had mm. on there for a little bit. Or, or it wasn't well, I, I mean, I do. Um, I prepare it new each time, but with the same materials. Okay, all right. So generally, the vibe is the same. Okay, but the pitches will change. Yeah, yeah. but like you, you have like a cluster of like alligator clips here and that's right there. Yeah, yeah. Um, whereas in this case, yeah, I mean, I can't even see because of the, the wood or whatever, I can't even see what the, the preparations are. So, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I wasn't methodical. I didn't like play chromatic scale to sort of find what's what, mm. but very quickly I kind of figured out some mm. sustain, some don'ts, mm. yeah, you know, mm. and kind of have to do that. But I'm always wary of, um, like, I don't want to play my to with my toys in public or whatever. Like, I don't mm. want to, in the course of the performance, like catalog everything that I can do and then do something right like as much as possible i try to like just kind of like go into some musical language with mm. with uh, uh, an increasing 
um, understanding of topology. So at the beginning, like I kind of knew what a few notes did, I kind of tried to make language with that. And then as I kind of expanded, oh, okay, these over here are doing this, oh, yeah. I can fold that in. But to, as much as possible, avoid for myself mm. doing the thing where I'm like, you know. Well, yeah, and you weren't doing that. Yeah. And yeah. You, as you say, I mean, you were playing straight away. But I mean, I think it can also be cool. Like, let's say um, you just sat down and um, uh, started started playing um, from from the language you know, but um, you've no idea which notes have been screwed up or not. It's like mapping one thing onto another, yeah. and I think that can produce interesting, hmm. you know, um, things uh, things that you wouldn't be able to anticipate. Yeah. Um, and then, and, and, and you know, that probably was happening, but then as you went through the performance, you, um, you know, intuit um, what that mapping is, and that starts to impact what you're playing. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, and I don't think that would necessarily result in your playing at the end being better than your playing at the beginning. There's, there's a change, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, which yeah, hopefully would be the case through just musical exposition as, as we sort of like have mm. a, a musical thing that unfolds over time. Mm. Um, in terms of like, because I think with, with preparations and modifications like this, part of the, the interest is the, the new timbral and pitch things yeah. that happen. So like the, it's access to a new sound world. But for myself, and correct me if this is different for you, part of it is also that exploration of different mappings of what's happening mm. here that like mm. to a certain extent it can break down a little bit of the muscle memory. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like that thing isn't going to be that same thing and that, that can be kind of a positive thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you were in, I mean, in, with an instrument like this one in particular, it's probably less likely to be the case, but if you can have something where the preparations would be not randomized, but would change over time, mm. um, but still in like a pseudo acoustic, electro acoustic, it, like it's not a sample library. Mm -hmm. Like, like if, mm -hmm. if, Mm. If there was like these little gnomes in here kind of moving things mm. or if it was uh, things were attached in a certain way that kind of naturally moved over time. Mm. Is that something that for you would be desirable in the course of a sitting a performance? I think it would be desirable in as much as um, it would keep that kind of dialogic thing between um, what you know and um, the the ways you've been trying to disrupt that. It would keep mm. that um, uh, ongoing. So the process of discovery and negotiation would also be ongoing. And that, that could be exciting. It could be dramatic. Um, it's, it would, there's a higher element of risk there. Um, so I think, I think it depends how you would, how you feel about risk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I quite like it, but yeah. it was just kind of yeah. curious whether Yeah, I do was, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> whether, whether that kind of sense of, of exploration and danger is like a, a local per performance thing or whether like per material mm. thing, like in the middle of a line even, like yeah, what yeah. change, like whether that's counter mm. to um, what you're going for with preparation, because one could, that could be philosophical. No, yeah, no, I, I, I don't think it is. I'm, I'm the basic... Um, um, kind of imperative, I think, with uh, the preparations is that thing that lots of improvisers do where they just want to know what the instrument can do, get mm. new sounds out of it, not only to disrupt previously known ways of, of playing, but also to, um, because they're fascinated by the, you know, the affordances of the instrument, by its mm. characteristics. And mm. um, I think often, um, so, you know, structural qualities of an instrument are masked by excellent performance technique, yeah. <laughs> and you know, improvisers they want to see what see see what it is and and see what the instrument can do, um, and then um, and then mess with that. Um, yeah, you know, uh, and timbre is a bit a big part of that, I think. And I, I don't know for me also, and it might not be the same with you, but it's a way of getting out of pitch oriented, for sure. You know. Um, Improvising, which can, you know, which can be problematic. Can yeah, be I mean, that's something that's kind of it's, it's come up as a, a slight sub theme for a lot of my mm. conversations. Is this like these days, I, I don't play very much piano at all. I, I have in some of these recent ones, but mm. um, most of what I do is is unpitched or or with instruments where the pitches are not um, like there's frequencies, but they're not 
they're not in a structural pitch context. Mm -hmm. So like I'll hit this little symbol and it'll have a pitch to it, but it's not a D mm -hmm. in the sense that like it would be here. Yeah. Yeah. And um, my relationship mm -hmm. over time with music has shifted away from, mm -hmm. you know, 12 named notes mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. you know, like just floating spectra. Yeah. And that's kind of been a thing. So like whenever I'm mm -hmm. faced with a surface like this again, mm -hmm. it, you know, it has me consider these things in a mm -hmm. way that like, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, how did how do you deal with the pitch problem? You know, yeah, in a certain yeah, way. So yeah. um, this mercifully mm. um, mitigates some of that yeah. <laughs> by yeah. both taking it yeah. out of your hands, but also making some of the those sounds no longer function in that way. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because even even let's say like on a, on a purely acoustic piano or on a Rhodes or something like this, where mm. there's no preparations, one can play it still in a non-harmonic but still pitched context. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and pianists have found amazing ways of doing that, you know, so Cecil Taylor and mm. kind of um, extends the possibilities of clusters of, of strikes where you're playing it two adjacent notes, yeah. you know, and um, doing that in, in such a, a rapid way that, um, you know, and the overtones all mash and it becomes a much more um, timbral experience. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but also he, you know, he's also really good at <laughs> pitch things. Well. So, yeah. um, on that, I want to kind of pick up on, on something you kind of said a second ago was like, uh, as an improviser, when you're kind of facing with an instrument, it's fine that like where it sort of breaks down or pushing mm. at the edges of it. Mm. And like how I, I would kind of want to ask you how you relate to, again, there's an instrument that you're you know, familiar with a preparation, mm. so you kind of know here, but if you're in a circumstance where you are, it's more unknown, mm. how much of, of what you're doing is to find those edges versus just kind of finding a space. Like, mm. it's kind of a nebulous question that I can kind of word a little bit better, but. I yeah, no, I, I think um, it's always desirable to have some time with the instrument before you're performing, mm. just to, um, so even if it's just a piano, um, let's say it's an upright piano, it's old, there's gonna be all sorts of tumble things happening there and possibly pitch things as well. Um, and either you can, discover that in performance like you have been doing with that, yeah. and that can be fruitful. Or, um, and, and what I do like is just sitting down and, and um, getting to know it, finding out its qualities, and, um, and then playing with those, because especially old upright pianos, mm. you know, um, they, they do have a lot of surprises. And it's not, even though they're pitched and um, supposedly, and um, you know, that's very fixed, they're mechanical instruments and they break down and they change. And yeah, a, even mechanically they're quite challenging, like yeah. up, uprights. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's the other thing, like action, playability. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, to perform well on an instrument or to perform so that you feel like you're doing the things you want to do on it, it needs to be playable. Mm. You know, and there's lots of instruments that aren't. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, with keys instruments, like mm. as pianists, mm. well, not so much pianists anymore. But like when you have keyboard instruments, the action is such a complex mechanism mm. and repeated. Mm. So like you'll have fifty odd versions of the same thing. So like you will feel the difference as mm. you go from things. And mm. an instrument, this old, probably doesn't have very consistent. <laughs> no. You know, you know, and, and that's mm. kind of. Uh, uh, it's interesting because yeah. that's an invisible challenge that you face that I don't hear. Yeah, it may manifest in that like that one key is harder to play so like it, it just sounds a little bit different but like mm. it's something that like from here to here matter or from here to here matters yeah. but not from there to here mm. um, yeah. which is kind of a yeah. I mean I guess with most instruments there is a, a case of that but with with keyboard instruments in particular because it's a it's an array of like identical repeated yeah, yeah things yeah. Um, and, and there's a there's a massive um, registral range on a on a piano or on yeah. a keyboard instrument you know, I mean, so this is probably about, you know, this has got the range of a guitar pretty much, mm. um, but a, a, a full-size piano is incredible oh, yeah, range. Yeah, it's, it's you know. So, so basic, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it can really make a difference. And then when you prepare something that impacts uh, the relative level. So for example, if I played up here with the same attack that I played down here, it would be overpowering. Hmm. So, you know, yeah, I mean, th those are um, kind of execution challenges hmm. um, that people would know if you weren't doing it very well. Yeah. <laughs> they don't really notice if you do. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. I mean, yeah, because a, a lot of what, yeah, what we do is, is sort of like from our brain to our hand to the instrument, mm -hmm. um, or is a different relationship than yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. from the other side of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, 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 man. <laughs> Should we play a bit more? Yeah, let's play a bit more. <laughs> do you want to stay there or? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. stay here. Okay. Um, Thank <laughs> you. 
If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.